Let's be honest, the internet is not that fun anymore. And this isn't just something that I've been saying. You may have heard of the phrase dead internet theory that claims amongst a lot of other things that the internet has effectively been taken over by bots, that the majority of online content is created by bots and that human activity is actually pretty minimal. The basic form of this statement definitely feels quite true. If you've been on Facebook lately, you've likely seen the pictures of AI Jesus that have dominated. Yeah. Can you argue that the internet is not as fun as anymore? I think it is just in an absolute sense. There is more stuff than ever on it, but there is also more competition for your eyeballs. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I guess you can somewhat compare it to like a video game that people just played how they wanted. They were just kind of having fun with it. But as time progressed, the meta also was refined of like how you should be playing the game. And the ultimate conclusion of it will be and always is that humanity is entirely lost. People just play whatever wins in the system. And that's it. And it would be stupid not to do that. It's stupid, but also it is, uh, I guess, not fun. Dominated the platform on YouTube, you've definitely seen these kinds of scam comments. And for some users on the internet, they've been able to literally prove that the person that they're interacting with is a bot, such as this user who was able to trick this bot into actually exposing itself. It's not exactly rare. This gets worse when we realize that cybersecurity firms themselves have come to the conclusion that bots in general now make up nearly half of all internet traffic globally. We've almost reached the point where bot activity is going to outweigh human activity. And granted, a good percentage of these bots are actually like good bots, right? Like web crawlers. Uh, okay. Who if these bots are actually like good bots, right? Like web crawlers who allow search engines to work. But a decent, decent chunk of this activity is done by bots that are designed to steal, to misinform, or to scam effectively. Either way, there's no doubt that the internet fundamentally feels different in recent years. This is a nuanced stuff. Uh, to be fair, the humans were doing that too. <laughs> no, there's a lot of conspiracy, there's a lot of fact. And I kind of want us to get to a more reasonable understanding of what's actually happening here. Is the internet dying? Are bots taking over? What's going on? If you are already familiar with dead internet theory, you have likely seen a definition similar to the one I, I just told you. This idea that bots are generating the majority of the content on the internet and it's going to lead to this like desolate wasteland. This is the common contemporary definition, but the original one is actually a bit more a bit more wild. It originates from a website that seems to find me at my lowest points. An archived version of the original theory is actually oh a different God. form. It was called Dead Internet Theory. Most of the internet is fake. By a mm, yeah, I mean, it's not going to be uh, dead by any means, but it is weird because you might go on Reddit, for example, and you see some topic upvoted about some guy about like making it big but it is fake in a sense because that they actually pay for the upvotes and uh you could see this a lot but also you can't tell usually you can't tell unless they are very amateurish a user named illuminati pirate and uh <laughs> i'm not kidding when i say this version is absolute lunacy i'll skip you the like ten thousand words of like slurs and give you their own summary of what dead internet theory really is Large proportions of the supposedly human-produced content on the internet are actually generated by artificial intelligence networks in conjunction with paid secret media influencers in order to manufacture consumers for an increasing range of newly normalized cultural products. Well, what was newly normalized cultural? That's a great sentence. Yeah. Basically, this is how we program people. It's usually just to sell you things. But, I mean, essentially you can argue that it is only to sell you things. Sometimes they want your money. Sometimes they want you to believe things products what this person means uh if you if you read a bit more of it is basically that it's like a government scheme to take over people's minds like many other conspiracy theories it does the thing of mixing truths with falsehoods quite liberally and leaving us it's not just the government though anyone with any power is invested in you if, if i benefit at all from you believing what i want you to believe then i i would be invested in trying to control you but of course most don't really have the means to do this Leading us to disentangle the truth. Personally, I don't think it's a, it's a mind control experiment by OpenAI to get my genetic code. Because it's not just me and you who struggle to actually get to the truth about this. Some of the world's you know, richest and most powerful people can't really get answers on this. You might not remember, but um, just a couple of years ago, everyone's favorite Twitter influencer, Elon Musk, tried to get out of the deal of buying Twitter by arguing that there were way more bots than had been previously suggested on Twitter. It's rare for me, he and I to agree, but this time he was actually probably right. Because if you didn't keep up with this story, uh, Twitter came to the conclusion that 5% of their users were bots. They were not willing to let any outside party have a look and investigate for themselves, and they were not willing to implement another method to estimate the number of bots. Five seems low. Yeah, 5% does seem low, and Twitter does have a historic problem with not actually knowing how many people are using the website. They famously miscounted their daily users for three years straight. And, you know, I don't have to remind you how the story ended, but basically, Elon said he'd get rid of bots, he didn't get rid of the bots, obviously, and uh, the problem got worse, and Twitter's like down 72% since he bought it, whatever. But there are good reasons why this information is being held so secret and is being like so tightly guarded. Why? I'm not sure Twitter is good. <laughs> it's not a great social media. Like, not just me and you can't find out how many bots are on the internet, but people with power can't find out either. Part of the reason is, you know, simply down to the fact that the whole revenue model of social media platforms relies ultimately on advertising. And over the last few years, the global ad spend has... Mm, but that's not the whole point of it. Even if Twitter was free, a lot of people would be highly invested in trying to buy eyeballs. 
then has been rising and rising more and more every year. I think we're all pretty familiar with this. Adverts are run on content and these platforms make money when people click on the ads. However, platforms aren't that interested in whether real users are interacting with ads or whether bot users are interacting with ads. In fact, they're only interested once their advertisers start to notice that there are too many bots on the platform. The optimal world for a social media platform is to have the maximum possible bot activity that doesn't get noticed by an advertiser because it means effectively that they make money on fake ad clicks. And this might sound like a bit of a conspiracy, right? That like, the platforms are, you know, in on it in quotes. <laughs> but fraudulent ad clicks and fraudulent ad behavior in general accounts for billions and billions of dollars every year. If you want to put a number to it, in 2023, around 84 billion dollars was lost to ad fraud. And 84 billion dollars a year of bot money that gets taken from advertisers and gets put into the pockets of platforms like Facebook, Google, YouTube, etc. And to companies that rely on this divulging data about bot activity is inherently a bad thing, which is why it's so hard to figure out the truth. But I think this helps us like think about what the end game of a dead internet theory would actually be, right? If the majority of all activity on social media platforms was now turned into bot activity, what would that mean for the platforms? It would actually be a terrible thing for these platforms because they wouldn't be able to have advertisers anymore. And we're actually already observing this happening on Twitter. It might be a good thing though. Because like basically the bots are trying to influence other bots. So that kind of lends, leads to an end game where, yeah, because the whole point is to influence the humans. Right. And it would not need to be complete. It just needs to get to the point where people are just pissed with it. And like, yeah, I'm, I'm leaving. Right. That's a good question. And once that genie is out of the bottle, it's never going to stay in. So at that point, what are you going to do? I guess you can try to talk to people face to face. <laughs> that might work. Hmm. Especially if you cannot tell. At that point, you might as well just talk to AI directly instead of AI that tries to trick you with uh, some ulterior motive. Basically, according to one marketing firm, during the Super Bowl weekend, around 75% of ad traffic was fake. And this is one factor, amongst others, to be fair, that has led to like a mass exodus of advertisers from Twitter. It provides like a little potential like, glimpse into the future, what it would look like if a website gets completely... Yeah, you can sometimes see this on YouTube too, that you see a video where like, it, it might have millions of views, especially in the, you know, get rich too genre. And, but it doesn't, the, the guy forgot to buy, buy uh, comments or something. <laughs> it outputs, it's like, oh crap, I only bought views. So, but yeah, it just means you need to think better, I, I suppose. Completely overrun by bots. Basically, it's a terrible thing for the platform. But there are a lot of people who don't think that this whole theory anyways is about necessarily like money, right? They think it's more about power and influence and being able to control mm. people. If you control all the bots. It's the same thing. Money is power. And influence is also power. On the website, and they produce the majority of the content. And supposedly that would lead to a world where you could control public opinion by creating what seems like a variety of content, but actually all is designed to push a particular agenda or a particular set of beliefs, right? You can decide what you want, what you want those beliefs to be. But I think that... Yeah, that's a good point. Mm. Because the classic indoctrination was that... I'm not saying this to come of as ignorant, but because like the kids go to school and they learn useful things, but they also learn the the right way to think within a system that they become advocates of it. And that's pretty much it. But and, and we still have that. But what is more overwhelming than that is that all the kind of media that you expose yourself to, and it doesn't have to be everyone, just most people, like all the movies, TV shows, games, whatever. There's always a battleground going on for pushing the right ideas in front of people. And if if it's small, no one cares, right? But if it's it's big, then everyone is fighting for pushing their their beliefs. But also that's not just the whole point. Because if you are well off, especially, then your game could be just try to keep people distracted, right? So, for example, if you're doing something shady, then all you care about is that the others are fighting. So, I mean, the internet would say that the class war is always just delayed by some other war that people are distracted over. That line of argument says many. And like every single day, there's some some kind of bullshit that they argue about. Whatever, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. That that's pretty much a takeaway mainly from a misunderstanding of how misinformation in general spreads across the public. Because it seems to imply that the only thing that matters is like just seeing the misinformation. And it's another case where like the truth gets kind of tangled in with conspiracy. It's not like a fear that comes out of nowhere because we've seen time and time again cases where big social media platforms have real deadly impacts in the world. When you see this, it's very natural that you'd be concerned about the amount of power that these platforms wield. And the idea that just by spamming bot content, we can shift the public consciousness isn't completely untrue. Because but also there's no winning move. Yeah, you might think that, oh yeah, I'm a reasonable person. I'm going to go on the platform and I'm going to stay reasonable. It almost doesn't matter what you think, but what you think about. <laughs> For example, uh, these days, uh, seemingly many people just having a full on gender war. And, you know, you, you can see like a good video, like, oh, yeah, they're making some good point. But like, why is this a thing? Why is everyone like caught up in this? And and seemingly most people are just caught up in it in earnest, earnestly. Some, some are 
truly paid pay to stir up things, but most are just they're just repeating what they are told. Because there's a phenomenon uh, known as the illusory truth effect, which basically says that the more you hear a bit of information, the more likely you are to believe it's true. The interesting part of this effect is that mm. it persists even if you know that the information is false beforehand. This illusory truth effect is kind of, I guess, implied to be the mechanism behind how dead internet theory would be would be shifting opinion, right? By effectively overloading you with generated content that leads you down a particular. Also, how much they identify with it. <laughs> so, uh, for example, just today, I, I like I saw saw like a. Um, the topic about some guy being like very critical about like evolution like okay due to like believing in uh religion it's like okay you're skeptical about that but you're not skeptical about the jesus bullshit so i mean you need to skeptical you need to be skeptical about everything that theory would be would be shifting opinion right by mm -hmm. effectively overloading you with generate content that leads you down a particular path but to assume that bots on the yeah also it's not gonna happen at once what what is gonna happen to you that even though you might be searching up how some kind of java tutorial it doesn't matter there's always going to be like some jordan peterson gonna try to lead you down some some path you might never go down on it's always going to be like one step at a time as, as you're ready to 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 go where you don't know on the road have that amount of impact i think makes some mistakes i want to talk to you about this paper i read as part of my research it's called the spread of true and false news online it's actually a pretty famous paper i found out and it explains some interesting detail in my opinion about how misinformation actually spreads on the internet bot accounts are actually way more likely to have fewer followers and and are in general a lot less active than people on twitter in spite of this misinformation actually spreads way quicker you're way more likely to have a lie go viral on twitter than you are to have a truth so how does this happen how does misinformation spread even if these accounts are the least likely accounts to be able to go viral on twitter the factor that mainly affects how misinformation spreads isn't necessarily bot activity but it's the way that people particularly people who are trusted will retweet or reshare that information and that massively increases the likelihood of their followers actually believing the misinformation the greater likelihood of people to retweet falsity more than the truth is what drives the spread of false news despite net mm. yeah exactly if it appeals to them then they will not think about it <laughs> also in, on the internet it's always a good idea even though it's kind of sketch to to cause drama right if you ask a question and you uh you, you just make it the most boring question on, on the internet and you ask it no one will reply but if you are just so 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 wrong then you will have endless replies just bashing you not not no one's gonna help they're just making fun of you how, how stupid you are but those are humans too of course but still the point is that if you want to engage people you can't be boring network and individual factors that favor the truth and this adds like a layer of legitimacy to these false stories this is really the problem yeah like dan says it's like inception they create the seed and it runs amok bots's role is primarily in the early spreading of false news but they aren't the things that really cause us to believe it the things that cause us to believe it are not just frequency but also hearing it from a source that we, we trust right a source that we consider reliable and a source that you know might not be super good at fact checking if you've been following the, the american election cycle you've likely seen examples yeah but thing is people are not gonna fact check things that appeal to them right Examples of false stories being spread uh, by people who should who should know better, right? They're eating the cats. They're eating the dogs. Yes, yeah, says false is more exciting, I guess. Yeah, for sure. That's that's part of it as well. There's a greater emotional uh, like salience to, to false news than the truth. Now, the conclusion that they reached uh, was that human behavior contributes more to the differential spread of falsity and truth than automated robots do. The problem we have here isn't necessarily a bot problem, but rather it's just a media literacy problem. You aren't very good at identifying misinformation. And I think that's a lost cause. I, I heard this point over and over and over and over again. But no, give me a guy, and I will fucking brainwash them. You know, give give me a means to do it. Give me a Skinner box, and I will program that guy to my liking as much as I can, by by the limitation of their biology. I guess uh, you you can't rewrite their genes, but you can rewrite their mind, and that's essentially what the box is that you're now watching does to you. We're very good at lending legitimacy to this information, which causes it to actually go viral and to spread even more. And when we think of dead internet theory as like this idea that bots are going to take over the internet and they're going to control the flows of money and the flows of information, then that's not really like a complete account of what's going on here. Because, well, I mean, the flows of money are damaged when bot activity gets too high. And the flows of information, while driven in the early stages by bots, are actually amplified by humans and they're spread by humans way more effectively than they are spread by bots. This has been reinforced by other pieces of research. And they came to the, to the ex exact same conclusion, actually. Even if the bot count was halved, it wouldn't make people any, any smarter. And so I think we need to take more efforts towards improving media literacy more than anything. Despite this, the dead internet. That's a lost cause. I, I don't like uh, lines like this. I'm like, oh man, you know, it's 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 okay. Like, it never happened before, but we just need to vote better. Or like, oh yeah, we just need to be more more responsible about things that is completely rigged. I don't think that's going to work. I think in many cases, the only winning move is to not play. Internet theory does definitely get to the core of something that we feel, right? Like, it, like, it resonates with a lot of people. The internet doesn't feel alive anymore. It doesn't feel active. It doesn't feel like...
mm-hmm. this escape that it once felt like. So why is that? What we actually are feeling is like a change in the experience of being online, which might not necessarily cor- correlate directly with a change in the statistical distribution of humans versus bots online. In my opinion, then in the theory definitely feels true. It has gotten worse, but I largely put that down to a huge shift away from connection, which takes place on websites like forums and message boards and smaller social network websites, to consumption. Well, it's not true yet, but... Mm. Which is something that you can do completely passively. The reason algorithmic feeds exist, or not for you to become more connected to the people you know in real life, it's for you to become a greater consumer. And this shift is what has made the internet, I think, feel like it's a place which is no longer alive, because you're no longer obligated, or you're no longer expected to even interact with a real person when you use the internet. Which is a far cry from 15 years ago, when Facebook's original goal was to bring people together, not push people apart. And so in that sense, it is kind of dead, because you don't need to communicate, you don't need to interact, you just need to consume. Well, 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 well. You know, I was alive during the rise of Facebook. I'm not sure it brought people together. Yeah. Because people went from talking to each other face to face to i don't know stalking each other on facebook maybe if you went there and if you didn't go there then you know maybe, maybe you you got to be like a social pariah like why are you the weird one not going on facebook or something so yeah i mean just ob- just objectively like if you're spending your time not talking to people but instead talking to people online or stalking them then that's less social interaction or less less meaningful social interaction at least Consume. The requirement for the amount of cognitive activity to use the internet is just slowly, slowly dropping. Uh, I don't mind. I don't think they're there yet. They're trying really hard, but not yet. Yeah. So I think it would be foolish to say that like bots don't really pose a threat to anyone who's online. But I think the moment that we'll know whether the moment that we'll know that the internet is you know dead in quotes is when advertisers are actually willing to spend money, disproportionate amounts of money on bot generated content relative to human generated content. Hmm. And today we're definitely not there. I'm not going to deny that the dead internet theory feels true because it does. However, I don't think that ending it at conspiracy is that useful because most often I see the dead internet theory like end with some kind of conclusion that is like along the lines of people who don't agree with me are bots. Whereas like that's obviously not true. Um, obviously, unless you disagree with me, then you are a bot, clearly. No. I think it's fair to say that the internet is going to be less and less human. Both meaning that humans are going to act less human on it to satisfy whatever matter it has. And we're going to have more and more bots. Even right now, the age of exploration is pretty much over. I basically go to the same sites all the time, with very few exceptions. It's hard to say. Just as we have more and more ads, and I guess we use more and more ad blockers, we can have more and more bots. Uh, to the point, people might not have an, a way to, like a, like a place to go, right? Yet I think it's optimistic to assume that maybe that's gonna eventually become some kind of situation where everyone is gonna go tired of the internet or at least chatting on the internet and and smell some grass and like hug each other or something like that the more probable outcome and somewhat dystopian is that people will get used to this and will be more manipulated than ever